A number of schools are getting back to face-to-face -face lessons with new physical distancing rules and settings. But many teachers are still unsure about how to go about it. After all, some of the staples of EFL or ESL, like pair work, board games and handouts, are not so safe right now. I'm Rubens Zareja, one of your Pavilion EOT vloggers, and today I want to share with you five suggestions on how to keep promoting interaction in times of social distancing, or distant socializing. A number of adaptations are being made to classrooms and lessons to accommodate the new normality. Here are some of the challenges reported by the brave teachers who are already in the front line. Understanding students who are wearing masks, ensuring students understand instructions when the teacher is wearing a mask, helping students notice the mouth shape for specific sounds, groups with a mix of face-to-face -face and virtual students or student rotation, ban on handouts, board games or any material that can be passed on from student to student, and monitoring students' work and collecting samples for language feedback. All of these challenges are being dealt with in different ways in different contexts. Some teachers and students are allowed to use face shields instead of masks. Some classrooms may have see-through partitions between students and not require face covering. But the challenge to promote safe interaction among learners is pretty universal. So let's cut to the chase. Tip number one, follow local recommendations and guidelines closely. Measures to contain the spread of COVID-19 vary tremendously from country to country, city to city, and even among schools. As teachers, it has become part of our job not only to be aware of the safety measures that are being implemented and abide by them, but also to communicate them to parents and enforce them in the classroom so that everyone feels that they are in a safe environment. If you haven't been back to the classroom yet, but you want to know what it's been like for those who have, you can check the September 2020 edition of ET Professional, where you find a very interesting interview with two teachers carried out by Nick Baguli. Tip number two, introduce collaborative projects. PBL, or project-based learning, had been gaining popularity even before lockdown measures were implemented. In previous videos here at Pavilion EOT, I talked about how projects can be helpful in online learning, but they are also very useful to create a collaborative learning experience while keeping a distance. According to David Hill, project work is child-centered. It gives an opportunity to work on areas of individual interest. It is also content-based. The language used involves all the skills and is a natural, necessary and contextualized tools for the expression of personal meaning. He says that projects are also integrated and the integration of different aspects of the topic aids the learning process and eases the language learning load. And finally, it is educational. The children learn something which is worthwhile about the world and their relationship to it, rather than a few apparent random fragments of a foreign language. In the article I mentioned, Hill's talking about children, but the benefits also apply to teenage and adult students. If you're a subscriber of Modern English Teacher or ET Professional, you can find on the websites a lot of different accounts of teachers who have successfully used projects with learners of all ages. Long-term projects are especially useful if you have a mix of students in the classroom and at home. Students who are at home may be working on a project while students in the classroom carry out different activities, or vice versa. And even students in the classroom and at home may be working on a collaborative project simultaneously. Tip number three, use technology. Or not. I know many of us are tired of technology after so many months relying so heavily on online teaching. But the things we've learned during lockdown can end up being quite useful in our face-to-face -face but physically distanced lessons. Digital tools can allow students to collaborate from a safe distance and mitigate some of the challenges posed by physical distancing and face coverings. Here are some digital tools and technology uses that can definitely come in handy once you're back in the classroom. Brainstorming with Padlet, collaborative writing with Google Docs, pair work from a distance using earphones and video or voice call apps, checking answers in pairs using instant messaging apps, sharing digital handouts via Dropbox or Google Drive. If you do need a break from technology, Jade Blue wrote a very practical and straightforward post with low-tech suggestions on how to organize whole class or plenary discussions. I'll include the link in the description below. Tip number four, bring back some good old drills. Remember the old days when teachers remained behind their desks and students were expected to face forward and not interact with anyone around them? 
Well, teachers and students made it work somehow, right? Drills can be repetitive and boring if students are just mindlessly repeating what the teacher said or making meaningless substitutions just for the sake of grammar. But with a little twist, drills can become more interactive, engaging, and fun. According to Scott Thornbury, many teachers, even those who subscribe to a communicative approach, feel the need for some sort of repetition practice of the kind that drills provide. This may be for the purpose of developing accuracy or as a form of fluency training, that is, in order to develop automaticity. Hence, communicative drills were developed. A communicative drill is still essentially repetitive and focuses on a particular structure or pattern, but it has an information gap element built in. In fact, some classic classroom activities are nothing more than drills in disguise, and they can be quite fun. So much so that some of them are actually very common party games. And here are some of them. Find someone who activities, 20 questions, who am I, never have I ever, Simon says, with students giving comments, and going on a picnic. Tip number five, make it playful. If your students are used to dynamic lessons and frequent interactions with their peers, the new normality may seem a bit gloom. It will take a while for us to get used to empty chairs, masks, face shields, and even not borrowing the pencil from our neighbors. We are facing some tough times, and we never really know the journey that our students are going through outside the classroom. So forget about sound methodology every now and then. Set some time aside for playing games or just having fun with students, even if it doesn't fit the syllabus or the lesson objectives. Some games like Scategories, Charades, Taboo, Scavenger Hunt, and even Kahoot are perfectly suitable for physical distancing contexts. They help us build rapport with and among students, and in such serious times they can help us relax and just have a laugh. And remember that if it's hard to see a smile when we're wearing a mask, we just need to remember to smile with our eyes. If you are already back in the classroom, let us know in the comments what you've been doing to keep your lessons interactive. And you can also connect with me on social media at WhatIsELT. Keep safe and keep teaching.